Thanks, Xavier, and thanks everybody for having me here. And I look forward to sort of interactive dialogue on, on a lot of what's happening here. Many of you are involved in it, have read about it, have actually helped um, fundamentally make this happen. But the perspective that I, I like to look at and think about when it comes to San Diego today is San Diego is a sandbox for innovation. You know, we want to be a place that, whether it's the private sector, academia, that we can be a organization, a city, a municipality that is open to that sort of um, interactivity, experimentation, change. Um, at the same time, we're a community that's definitely involved and invested in uh, really trying out new and different things. And, you know, it's interesting when people kind of think about San Diego, and I do a lot of work uh, with other cities around the country and around the nation about where we fit kind of in the universe of cities. I think about San Diego as, you know, we're not the biggest, we're not the New York, we're not the Chicago, we're not in the worst shape, we're not the Detroit, so we're not the headline that everybody's like, oh, well, we got to go solve their problem, so we're going to go figure out what San Diego needs. Um, we were at one point in time. And that's kind of how we're in this interesting space of having really innovative, smart people that are doing really innovative, smart things. Um, but to some extent, not having a lot of recognition for that for the last decade, because really, we were mired in a fiscal crisis as a civic organization. And so we're really kind of at the perfect moment, uh, I think, of opportunity for uh, a lot of the innovators and the great things that have been happening in the city over a long period of time to be highlighted. And we'll go through a few of those. So. I wanted to bring this up uh, real quickly uh, because a whole series of these ideas that, that a lot of folks don't know are happening at the municipal level that are really sort of radically changing what's happening um, in and around your space. So whether it's traffic signal communication master plans, stormwater, online street repair, 311, with development services with OpenDSD, which a, a lot of you are familiar with from a data perspective, a whole new brand new project tracking system. In the Economic Development Department, we now have a sustainability program manager who's really driving climate change and an improved climate action plan. Environmental services, uh, 25 solar facilities that are going to be coming online on city facilities. The light grid replacement that I'll get into in a few minutes. Trash to energy, so even more methane gas being transferred into energy. Moving towards eventually under the climate action plan, 100% renewable sources for city uses. Um, in homeless, Homeland Security, which you don't hear a lot about, our Department of Homeland Security working on GIS, uh, Regional Computer Aided, Aided Dispatch, um, a common operating picture for the entire state. Information Technology Department working on fiber sharing agreements, an entire redesign of our website, which many uh, folks in and around this space have really helped to uh, push forward, and we uh, appreciate that. Um, the fiber sharing agreement, which we find pretty fascinating, the port, airport, and the, um, the, the city of San Diego are looking at figuring out where our fiber is. That entire uh, dark fiber argument that everybody has talked about, where's the mysterious dark fiber? It's hiding someplace. It's there with the holy grail. Uh, you know, mapping that and actually sharing the fiber that we do know where it is amongst three different jurisdictions. The San Diego Public Library with our City Voice um, project with Code for America. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that, but we've pushed out in every single one of our branch libraries the ability to provide input on the sort of programming and services you'd like to see in your local library. Thousands of kids getting helped at, their, at the library um, to do their homework. Maker spaces in three of our libraries, a DIY bio lab in our La Jolla library, um, redoing our, a, and creating a maker space in the Malcolm X library and an entire redo at the Central Library. So places where kids and adults can really experience that at low or no cost. So we have, oh, and then Alex is here, uh, an open data initiative um, with our performance and analytics department. Some really neat things happening there. And for the first time in God, I don't know how long, um, at least a decade, actually asking all of you what you think about how we're doing. Now, we do customer service surveys, and all of our departments do those, but for residents all around the city, you know, what do you think about your city? How are we doing? Are we doing well? Are we doing poorly? Um, what is it that we can do to, to improve? Something that hasn't really happened. I'd also put under performance and analytics the SD Works program, which was soliciting ideas from all of our employees to try to turn around and change uh, the organization, saving a million dollars per year from ideas that came from 
Everybody from the person who reads the meter to the person who checks your, your water meter, those folks all gave us a bunch of different ideas. Planning department, a data-driven div community plan update. So actually using things like transit-oriented development, transit priority areas, age of the plan, um, a whole series of factors to decide which ones are we going to do next. Not necessarily any longer waiting for um, who, who ha you know, did we get a grant to do this particular plan. Um, using GIS-based geodesign tools and an urban tree program. Yes, the city of San Diego now has a Lorax. Our urban, our urban forester um, we recently hired for the urban tree program. Public utilities department, which are probably some of the major things happening in the smart city space um, that uh, are, are, are pretty I incredible. So from the pure water perspective, um, advanced metering infrastructure, real-time ocean observation systems, small-scale hydropower um, projects, all things that are improving uh, the sustainability of the grid. Pure water will be recycled water program that will be providing a third of your water from recycled sources, so increasing our water independence. And then a whole series of things, um, including, as you guys have heard, investigating Google Fiber in the city of San Diego, um, and then open data on city-owned properties. Some of you will remember a time um, when the city didn't even know all the properties it owned. We are light years past that, and we're expecting to go light years beyond. And then our Office of the Treasurer, smart park key meters, mobile payments, a whole series of things around that. This list actually came from just asking our departments for the first time, okay, what do you consider in the smart city space um, that you are doing? And what does that look like? And when we held this session for the first time with a whole series of our departments, um, they were absolutely shocked actually uh, as to not just how much was happening in and around the city that fit in the s smart city space, but initiatives that they'd never even known about. So if we don't know about it within our own city, then, then how are you? And, and, and so we're really trying to pull around a series of ideas um, in the city of San Diego where uh, we can find ways to um, catalyze and pull together smart, intelligent infrastructure projects and the communities that care about those and really leverage them to move the city forward. And so um, as I'm looking through this entire series, I think I am missing a couple of slides, but that's fine because I know everything that's on them. Um, this is what happens, Xavier, when I do this like five minutes before I get here. Uh, one of the things that I, I think uh, that we're going to sort of focus on that, that really matters, and I will just check this one more time, um, is around the smart, the smart parking meters, smart street lights, and the bigger initiatives that the city is doing in this particular space that are really raising our profile. So the first that I would talk about is something that, that many of you have heard um, back in September. The White House announced this Smart Cities Initiative. And so what does Smart Cities mean? Well, everybody has a definition. It's kind of like saying ice cream. Okay, we know what ice cream is, right? But there's so many different flavors. Or actually, it's more like just saying food, right? Food, and there's so many different types. Or really, kind of today in Smart Cities, it's like stuff. Right? That's how broad the smart city term is. But for us at the city, we kind of define it and bring it down to a couple of things. Really, ICT, sustainability, and, and the data possibilities in and around that. And so as we look as a city of how we want to move forward in that particular space, um, we, you see a whole bunch of different types of examples of the initiatives and things that we're doing. Um, we really began looking at where and how can the city focus on some individual projects, but things that are scalable, not just throughout the city, but around the entire country. And that's when we decided to partner with UC San Diego around the Metro Lab Network, which was announced in September of last year by the White House as a part of a whole wide ranging smart city initiative, um, which was 20 university city partnerships from around the country that had come together to uh, dedicate themselves as a network to doing smart city projects, but then sharing that learning around the country. Uh, it was very exciting. Uh, we were also selected to facilitate a session around intelligent infrastructure, pr primarily because of our work in and around smart streetlights, which I'll get to in a minute. But this, the power of the city-university partnership is absolutely crucial 
to moving forward a lot of the solutions today. And I'll tell you a quick story. So we're, we're there with 20 other city university partners. And as it's continuing, one of the, the professors begins to sort of pontificate about needing to, if you're going to catalyze change in cities, then you must identify the individual actor within an organization with the uh, appropriate skill level, uh, power level, and ability to effectuate change within that organization. And he says, and they do exist. And I was like, I'm listening to this long bit. And I said, excuse me for a second. Um, uh, yes? I said, says, what you're saying is not all bureaucrats are stupid. And everybody <laughs> starts laughing, right? Because there's this, this sort of bias that if you're in government, you're there um, and you're there to defend the government and you're there to kind of block the way of any sort of progress or change, right? And so a little bit later on in the conversation, um, the head, I, I think, of uh, CMU, uh, as we're describing some of the challenges within universities, because those are also very uh, political and bureaucratic institutions, said, well, and let's remember that if not all bureaucrats are stupid, not all university professors are smart. And so <laughs> upon that premise, we're seeing nationally where universities and cities are coming together with private sector partners to really effectuate change, to understand the issues that each and every one of us have, but how we can leverage that, that sort of change. And so we're excited to announce the Metro Lab partnership with UC San Diego because there are a lot of smart people there and identify about three pilot projects we're gonna work on over the next year. The reason why I think this network's a little bit different than others is because um, there's funding from the MacArthur Foundation um, to hire an executive director. And I think you'll be seeing over the next year a lot of information coming out of that particular space that brings to, to bear um, city university partnerships. So why does that matter to a city? It's great to have the research capability. It's great to provide um, the ability for research to be applicable in your city. But um, my, my counterpart in the, the city, um, Ron Villa, who is over things like IT, um, has been with the city for 30 years. And we constantly have this conversation that for 30 years, really, within the city, um, we've never had a research and development department, right? Because taxpayers want their potholes filled, and they want their services delivered, and they want their water to, they, they want their lights on, their, Toilets to flush, and they want the potholes filled, right? And so where does R&D really fit in that? Well, we're at this like tipping point, right? Where if we're not radically changing the way that we do business in this space, we're not gonna be able to deliver the services that people want and expect. And, and that brings me to the, the intelligent street light or intelligent infrastructure question and conundrum. So, I mean, today we're doing infrastructure in a lot of ways, the same way we were when I Love Lucy was on TV, right? The same folks are going out and putting asphalt in potholes, right? Um, you think about our streetlight project, which, I mean, how many of you know that we were using sort of incandescent bulbs or high pressure sodium, very inefficient? We then go to LED bulbs, save a lot of energy, that's great. Except for, we don't know if the bulb is lit or not lit until you complain or your car crashes into the pole, right? We wouldn't know um, how much energy that pole is actually using because we have no individual meters on those poles, right? Um, so we have no way of dimming and lighting because we pay the utility on a per pole rate. These are the sorts of things that, we're, that San Diego, I think, is doing a good job really getting at changing. That was the catalyst for our light grid replacement, which was 4,000 street lights downtown, quarter of a million dollars saved, 60% reduction in energy, individual meters on all of the poles, a rate that we're working with SDG&E on right now to be able to have individual rates. And that led to our intelligent um, infrastructure partnership with GE that downtown put fi approximately 50 of those censored around parking optimization so it could sense what was in the right of way. That has a lot of uh, implications either for trying to find uh, a parking space on your way down to the ball game or whether it's um, the, the idea that you have a semi parked in a red zone and creating a hazard, being able to sense that. It was a fairly successful pilot and that is leading us now to uh, three things um, which are a part of our Envision America um, project that I'll talk about in a second. 
But this, this intersection of bringing together the university, the private sector business, um, folks like yourselves around this space is really, I think, where San Diego has a competitive advantage um, in trying to change the game as it, it relates to how we're trying to um, improve our infrastructure. So Streetlight Pilot was great. Um, we we uh, appreciated the information that came from that. Um, but how do you kind of take that and change the game when it comes to the way we see all of this? That's what led us to um, apply for Envision America, which was another announcement back in September by the White House. Envision America was a challenge that was based upon work that was done um, around Envision Charlotte that brought together their utility provider, private industry academia to change the sustainability in Charlotte. And um, we were selected as one of 10 cities. Uh, it was pretty fascinating. Um, it came with being able to have a technical working session around your Envision America idea. And that's where we came up with the one that I think will appreciate input from all of you as we go down the road on this, this concept. So the first part of the three-part project, because couldn't make it simple, had to have three parts. Uh, my speech teacher would be very happy about that. Uh, the first part of the project was how do we scale the uh, work that we've done with GE. So a 15 to 20 million dollar blueprint for deployment of censored streetlights. Where should they be? What does the network look like? What, how are you going to fund it? And right now we're in the middle of working on that particular blueprint. But not wanting to just rest there uh, and at Envision America, there were the other nine cities had lots of neat little ideas. There were innovation net labs, neighborhood innovation labs in New York City. There were um, other eco district projects. There was a downtown project that involved like bronze mice. Fascinating. Um, but for us, we wanted to say rather than just take that case study and you know write it up and everybody talks about this is okay, this is how San Diego did it, just like I've read about how Barcelona did it, and how Copenhagen did it, and how New York is doing it, right? All these individual case studies that sometimes are a little more than a pilot and, and most of the time um, are very sort of dialed into that particular area regionally. Can we be catalytic in changing the game for other cities? And so we spent several hours at this session saying, if we were to take the San Diego blueprint for the deployment of censored streetlights, can we extrapolate enough out of that to create an intelligent infrastructure deployment roadmap. So whether it's streetlight sensors or um, whether it's adaptive traffic signals or whether it's anything kind of in that smart city intelligent infrastructure space, what do you need to do? What are the elements of that? And then can we publish that, get feedback from different areas and regions, say kind of this is the skeleton if you're gonna go down this sort of deployment um, in this particular space. And I, I was really fascinated. We had a lot of folks in the room, didn't know how this conversation would go. I was you know, beating my head on the wall. So why did I propose something that I have no control over? But fascinating, absolutely fascinating conversation that we had um, in Charlotte. There are so many elements, but there's, there are actually a lot of them are common. And I think a lot of them are things that are of interest to all of you here. So if you're gonna do an intelligent infrastructure deployment, Obviously, you need to you know, first understand the fact that there's gonna be data implications. You need to know what the network is gonna be. You need to know what the devices are. You need to understand the value proposition, have a business case, a deployment strategy, communications message. Um, we went through all these technical aspects that you could begin to put into buckets or into categories for any sort of intelligent infrastructure deployment. And we got to the end of the entire list and litany of all of these things that you need if you're gonna have that perfect intelligent infrastructure deployment. And all of a sudden one of the folks said, oh wait a second, what about the users? We'd forgotten <laughs> the people that we were serving on the end and didn't think about the users because we were so focused on the structure of the actual like deployment of the architecture of the infrastructure. Um, which was a good reminder to all of us that work in this space that you know, at the end of the day, the reason why we do any and all of these things is for the people who can uh, experience it, enjoy it, um, 
better I I experience their community. You know, at the end of the day, it is about the user, the customer, the citizen, um, which is why we do any of these things uh, from the government perspective and from folks like yourselves that either from a business perspective or donating your time really care about this particular space. So I'm really excited about where San Diego is going with this and we can get into the nitty gritty and weeds on I think the project and some of these other elements. But the, the big pieces you know, for today really are around, um, we are a leader in the sustainability space. There is a lot that, that is happening um, not just to deploy things here, but how we can extrapolate that nationally and really change the conversation. Uh, we've been recognized um, in, a, in a lot of these areas and spaces, and I think um, that's gonna continue to happen. And that's not for bragging rights or anything along those lines. I mean, ultimately, being a smart city is about having the sort of talent and people in the city that, that you want. Ultimately, it's about being able to have a place that people's kids can grow up, your partner can live, you know. Those are the things and the reasons why um, we do all of this work. And I think ultimately, that's the place that we're gonna need to go. Because from a government perspective, you know, the things that you can do with your smart device today that you would just think, well, of course, you should be able to do that with your city infrastructure or something like that. I mean, your water bill that comes every couple of months, that's a way that it's been done for many, many years. But how does that drive your consumer behavior when we're trying to get people to conserve, right? If you're finding out about your water usage after it's happened, two months after it's happened, well, that's not really helping you conserve. The city's advanced metering infrastructure is working on getting at that particular question and issue. You know, can we use and catalyze information to understand kind of the heartbeat of a city, the energy usage, the water usage, all of those pieces to then drive our individual behaviors in a direction that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, the technical aspects of this, the technology, in a lot of cases exists. But I'll give you an example. You know, we can put an adaptive traffic signal um, up at an intersection with a high def camera and it can sense what is in the right of way and it can, through an intelligent algorithm, decide who is next and you can have a network of a bunch of those that could move people different ways. I was just coming over here and there was a fire truck that was barreling its way through the intersections. Well, those trucks have Opticom and if you know what that is, it's a flashing light at each one of those intersections if it's Opticom censored that turns that intersection green. Great. But that's just when the fire truck is within range of that particular intersection. What if you have a network, right, of 50 adaptive traffic signals that the dispatch uh, identifies where the fire is and we can plot out the best route of where that fire truck can go. These are all things for those of you that work in this sort of space that make technological sense. But when we started looking at adaptive traffic signal infrastructure, just upgrading the wires underneath the ground, just getting the, the cable laid, right, the fiber optics, was probably the biggest impediment to being able to put the stuff on top. So we're drilling down and digging into sort of in the smart network that has to be the bones of, of what ends up getting deployed here. Very excited. Uh, I, our biggest strength is all of you, um, the folks that can bring ideas to us, that can help us better understand what services are needed, what, what technology is out there, what projects and initiatives are out there. It's how each one of these different pilot projects have happened. Um, but I'm hoping to get to going from you know, proofs of concept and pilots to really embedding this level of innovation in everything that we end up doing, right? Because that's when it really changes the game. When the question is not, okay, are we going to lay fiber when we repave this road? Um, and how much more will it cost, right? To, okay, this is the entire 5,000 miles of streets in the city of San Diego, and this is where we're going to be deploying, and it's just a part of being a smart city and cost of doing business to make sure that that communications infrastructure is in the ground. Um, those are the places that I think a lot of the leadership here at the city are starting to go, and uh, I, it has some pretty transformational opportunities for the city of San Diego and for how all of you experience it.